Hello and welcome to Crantwick Art. This afternoon I'm going to do a demonstration about making a wall hanging. And this is the wall hanging we're going to make, an owl in a tree. When this is finished it'll be a lot smaller, it won't be overly big. It's got a hook on the back so it should be able to be hung on the wall. I'll show you how to do all that. In order to do this we need a few tools. You're going to need a knife to cut with, something that you can use to smooth the clay. I'm going to use this particular boxwood tool. Something you can cut holes with. Uh, I'm going to use this old extruder. It's not much good for anything except cutting holes now as the screws are got, uh, the screw thread's gone, but that's perfect for that. And you need some newspaper. Before we started I've made some preparations. I've rolled out some clay. I've got some strips lying around here which I'm going to use. I've also cut out two circles. One's about 10 centimetres and the other one is just a little bit smaller. So the first thing we do is we get our clay onto the board and we get our paper. Now if you're worried about the fact that you can't fire newspaper in your kiln, this is absolutely fine because we're going to take it out before we're done, but it's going to provide some support for us while we build. So I screw it up into a piece like that that will go right the way around. And I've torn it off a little bit so that it's more or less the right length to go right the way around, as I say. That's going to provide a little bit of a a bolster to make the edge of the hole. Then I get my clay and these are these off cuts that I had when I was actually making my rolling out my pieces to start with. So we're going to get these and we're going to put some slip on them <coughs> and we're going to put them all the way round over the top of the paper trying not to trap the newspaper while you do this. And, um, I'm going to raise my board up slightly so you can see better. Okay, so strip's going to go there, going to flow over the end, smooth that into the clay there, tuck the newspaper under it. Same on the other side, let's get a nice lump of clay. See so if I can find a strip, a nice little bit of rough strip here. That's going to fit quite nicely there, I think. So put it in, plenty of slip on it, stick it down, do the circle close to the edge as you can. Let it fold over. So, so that's going to start to build up the hole that the owl's going to be in. <coughs> Don't be afraid to sort of get these, squish them around a bit. The more you squish them, the more they'll look tree-like. So that's going to, the piece is going to go there. So again, plenty of slip. Try not to trap the newspaper. Close to the edge as you can. Make the hole as big as possible. Put it in. Smooth the pieces together. Let it flow over the top there. The hole. Another strip. And we do this all the way round so that the, basically that big circle, it's the biggest of the circles we're using here, goes, gets completely covered all the way round with clay. So it doesn't matter at this point whether it's thick, thin, whatever, just get it in there, making almost making a dish here with very rough edges. Do the same at the bottom, get some strips in there. Covering up the newspaper, making sure it's well and truly attached to the disc. That's a very, a very odd shaped dish here. Hopefully you can all see okay. You don't have to be too delicate with it. It's a tree trunk. So you want it to look a bit rough and ready. Okay, last piece in here, that piece here, I'm just going to squish it about, tear it a bit, make it fit into there. Like that. Like that. Okay. Smooth them all down. And now I'm going to build it up a little bit more to make it look a little bit more tree like. So I'm going to add some more strips of clay and put some here where you can see I've still got newspaper showing there. So I'm going to put that in there, push it in there. Okay, a bit more here. Great way to use up little strips of clay. So you can mash them about, make them whatever shape you need. The more rough and ready the better. the newspaper in. As I say, you want this little dish, which is going to be the actual hole that the owl's going to be in. 
but I like the idea of having it trailing to a point at each end so I'm going to add a bit more here Get it in smoothing it down get rid of any straight lines trees don't have a straight lines if you're if the microphone is picking up the screaming of children I don't have a, a group kidnapped in the back room my studio backs onto a nursery and they've let the kiddies out in the sunshine this afternoon so we have the joyous sound of them chasing each other around around the garden out there okay, so just build up a bit here a bit more on the top downside of this particular location. It's a lovely location generally for people but when they let the kids out it can get a bit noisy. Still it could be worse. Sometimes they're out there playing their recorders or banging on saucepans. Today it's a quiet day compared to some. Okay so just fill that up a bit in all sorts of places. So what I'm aiming to do here is make like a like a rough dish with rough clay all the way around. Making sure that I've got all of it covered so there's no bits that are going to be left up in the air. So I'm going to put a little bit more at the top here. I'm quite happy with the shape there. The great thing about this is you don't have to be nice to it. Just mash it around. The more you mash it, the better it will look a bit more tree-like. You can get a bit carried away with this but build it up as much or as little as you want as big or as small as you want. I'm trying not to make these too big because I haven't got a lot of wall space and one or two of these I might, if I'm lucky, be able to sell and I need to be able to ship them somewhere so I don't want them too big and heavy. Okay so I'm quite happy with the rough shape I've got now. Okay again it's all it's looking like really at the moment is a rock pool. So to make it more tree-like what I will do is I'll start now to sort of work the clay and what I'm aiming to do is almost to sort of like with my finger gouge lines in it which I can then push and mould and shove around and it starts to become more bark like. If you want to get really into this of course you can look up some pictures of different tree barks give you some sort of idea as to what you're looking at. This is sort of very roughly based upon an oak cross with the lime tree. <clears throat> okay. Try not to make it too thin on the edge. Remember this has got to be able to survive. So although I have there I'm just going to push it in a bit. I don't want it breaking off in the kiln. And then I'm just going to push it together because what I want to do is make this hole deeper. And the reason we have a background to this, you might be thinking well you don't need to bother with that, you could just have a ring of clay. You could but I want to make sure that when this is all together with the owl in it that I can paint the back of it black so that it looks like there's a deep hole. If I didn't have this basis behind us then of course it would be whatever colour the wall was behind and that might not be suitable. So I get this built up. Made more wood like. So the more you push it and shove it and be rough to it the better it will start to look. Try not, though, to have too many pieces that aren't fix, fixed down, these little flaky bits. Unless you're doing a yew tree, because they have very flaky bark. But we don't want that on this one. We want it to look like it's actually organic and grown, and it's not having a bad hair day. Right. So that's the basic shape that we're going to put the owl into. The next thing we need to do before we go much further is to make sure that it is well put together. So I'm actually going to flip it over. So I'm going to persuade it off the bat. I can, I hand under it, lift it up and turn it over. Because what I now want to do is you can see all these bits where I've been putting the pieces together. I need to make sure they're smooth and fixed in so that nothing's going to drop off. And of course at this time I can also check the edges aren't too thin. They're not going to cause me a problem later and I can tidy it up. I always say you can tell a piece made by a professional potter by how they finish the back off. So I get this, I got it in my hand here to protect it. You could make a cushion of something like bubble wrap or uh, more newspaper or something like that, but so that you can see what I'm doing, I've picked it up so you can see. 
Now at this point we can also now take the newspaper out, for those of you who are worried about putting newspaper into your kilns. And we can then get at this base piece again and make sure that is properly secured as well. And it should be, put enough clay on the outside, but it's a good idea while you've got it here to do this. Now, as we're going to want to hang this, we've got to think about how. You could, if you wanted to, put two holes in, top and bottom, for it to be bolted on. Or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a hook fastening on the back of this. So, first of all, decide which is the top and which is the bottom. Looking at this, I think that's going to be, it's going to go around that way, I think. So that's going to be the top. So I'm going to put a hook at the top part, so I turn that back over. So the hook is going to go on this top here, but it needs reinforcing. It's going to have to carry the weight of everything. And I don't want the clay breaking during firing. So I'm going to get a little sausage of clay. Like that, just a little one. And press it flat. I'm going to score it. And stick it on. Before I do that, I'm just going to double check that I have got the right part as the top. It's going to be there this one and I'm going to smooth that in make sure it's really well fitted nice and firm nice big lump of clay there that's going to be strong enough to hold the hanger really well worked in then I'm going to get a piece of clay and I'm going to make a sausage just a little one which is going to be curved like this and be scored again plenty of slip Fix that onto my thickened piece of clay there. Smooth it down well. Remember, this is going to be a very important part of the construction. Not want it falling off. Okay, like that. Then I'm going to add another one on top of it, another coil on top of it. But it's going to be slightly lower. So it'll give you a little bit of a hook to be able to put it on. So I'll do that. where my tools come in so I'm going to smooth that down just like that and I'm going to flatten it off a bit and then I'm going to use this just to make sure that that has a hole that a hook can hook up under make it big enough make sure that even after firing it's still going to fit okay press it down a little bit Okay, so that's the back of the piece done. You can now flip it back over. If necessary, I can build the clay up a little bit more here, just to make it look a little bit more tree-like, so that we can cover that, that hanging piece. And I'll do that. I'm going to put some more clay on. Build it up. There. And at the top there. Three. Right. Because it's going to be the top, it's not quite so desperate. Hopefully, you're not really going to see it. Let's tuck it down a little bit more like that. Okay. Right, I'm just going to push it and shape it a bit, make sure that we've got a nice deep hole to put my owl in and that it's the right consistency. Okay, so the owl's going to sit in the bottom there. I'll smooth that down there. Okay. So that's the background. Now for the owl. This is where we take our second piece of clay. Now it's really useful at this point if you've got something to put it over. So I've got the lid of a pot here and I'm going to put it over that and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to use a little bit of newspaper just to make sure it doesn't stick to the plastic. And I'm going to put it over and very gently shape it down around the edges. This is going to be our owl's face. And the first thing we're going to do is actually put the eyes in, or at least mark where they're going to go. So the head is going to take up sort of like the top two, the two quarter, three quarters of the, the piece. So the eyes are going to go sort of about, on this particular one, about an inch down and about an inch or so apart. And then I cut the holes. So I cut one hole there, one eye, I'm making sure it's level. 
cut the other eye. Okay. Next thing I do then is I actually make the eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm, the eyes are actually going to be sunk into these holes. So this is like the skull of the owl. Those are his eye sockets and the eyes are going to go into there. So we get the clay. As always, I make one eye and then cut it in half. Okay. And we roll it again to make sure it's the right size. And present it to the eye socket. So it goes in there. It's not bad. Might be a little rounder by the time I'm finished, but that's okay. And one's going to go in there. So, get some more slip to it, put the eye in, press it down firmly into the eye socket. Because you could do this by not bothering cutting the holes and just cut your eyeball in half, but where's the fun in that? So, put that in there and there. So we've now got basically a circle of clay with two lumps in it. So we now turn it over and we smooth in the eyeballs on the back just to make sure eyeballs don't drop out. Nothing worse than an eyeball dropping out halfway through. Okay, pop you back on there. Next, we need to now start building up around the eyes. And we do this with a sausage of clay. Close that away for a minute. So I'm gonna roll, pinch and squeeze some clay to make a coil. The reason my coil's gone square is I press too hard, press even less hard and it's better. Okay, so we want a coil, and this coil is going to go between the eyes and round, there, yeah, to make a heart shape, basically. So that's going to be one half of it, a little bit of concern, this clay's getting a little dry today. I have to give it a little squirt to help it on its way. Trying not to squirt the camera, so I'll do it offline. To the other one, trying to make it about the same size in terms of thickness. Okay. Okay. And again, that's going to go from the middle of the eye there round to the bottom of the face there. Okay. Let's see if they fit. Unfortunately, our studio cat's fur is getting in the way. Okay. So we're going to have that sort of effect a little heart round his eyes. On. Leave a little gap. Don't put the clay actually up against the eyeball because we're going to build that up to give that effect of feathers. But now I can go around. We've got that in place. I can go around and fix it on. Did I put slip on it? Yes, I did. Good. We all do it sometimes. Can't remember what we've done. So first of all, going around the outside, just squishing it down, getting it fixed on all the way around, trying not to distort it too much. Make sure I'm doing it on camera, which I probably wasn't. There we go, so go all the way around like that, fix it. And you can see that during the pushing and pulling, I've actually made that slightly longer. I don't want this, comp this little part at the bottom, so I'm just gonna nip that off so it comes a bit more up like that. I want to make sure it's still centred and the eyeballs are still in the right place relative to this coil. Then I go around the inside, smoothing the coil in. Try not to squash the eyeballs while you're doing this. we're making is a version of a little owl. Little owls are actually diurnal. They come out during the day rather than the night. And because it's a British little owl it doesn't have tufts either on the top of its head. But if you want to add tufts or you want to sculpt your owl into something completely different, feel free. Oops, I've got newspaper stuck to the back now. Let's take that off. Okay, so we've got that effect. Now just going to squash it down a bit, spread it out. Make sure my 
and squeeze together. Okay. Then I'm going to add a bit of clay, a little bit more clay. Again, let's see if this, oh, that's better, that's a bit softer. Be careful though with mixing clay. So if you've got clay that's really hard and you introduce clay that's really soft, you're likely to have a problem with cracking. So I'm just going to mix up the softer clay with the harder clay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a strip of clay now down that middle there. This isn't going to be the beak. It's going to be where the beak's going to go though. So I don't want it too thick. So quite a thinnish sort of strip. Score it. Slip it. Stick it. Okay, that goes in there like that. Okay, stick that down. Okay. Then we get another small piece of clay. Try and find something that's again, not too soft, not too hard. And make smaller coils. Those little thin ones. We make some worms. Cut that in half, and this is going to tuck in around the edge of that eye there. So, again, get some slip in. So we're slowly sort of building up around the eyeball. Try not to get slip, too much slip on the eye. doesn't want to be too thick a piece. This is going to give us material in order to be able to build up that feathering around the eyes. So it's going to go in there, like that, tuck it down. And then a piece on the other side. Again, slip. It's going to go around there. Around the eye, and this is where you find that your eyes aren't in the right place. But never mind. So we've got that then. And then we're going to have two more pieces of clay that's going to go that way. So either side, like a moustache underneath where the beak's going to go. Again, you don't need too much fur. Too much fur? No, oh, it'll be a feather. Too much clay anyway. And one piece is going to go like that. And the other piece is going to go like that. Now we can start building up the feathers. So we get the tool, in this case my favourite little piece of wooden tool, you can use anything really, knife will work just as well. And you start pressing it in and sculpting it. So what I'm aiming to do is I want the feathers here to be flowing that way. Okay. And then this clay I've put in here I'm going to use to build up so that from the eyes out to the edge of the eye, you've got this slope the eyes are actually set quite far back in the feathers. It's really strange when you look at an owl's skull that they're very much like any other bird. So the eyes are actually either side of the head with the beak. All of the, the all of what you see as, see as an owl's face is just feather. If you put an owl in a bucket of water for a moment or two and took it out, you find they come out looking very odd. So again, just move it in, work it in. Try not to mess up the eyeball while you do this. But as I say, the aim is to sort of provide some feathering. Most of the this sort of feathers around the eyes, they reckon, are actually to help with the owl's hearing. Owls don't have particularly good eyesight, although little owls do have better than some because, they, as I say, they're day, day hunters. But um, mostly they reckon it's, it's the, the feathers that help to direct the, the sound towards the ear. So we build that up, so and the, that way, that way, the feathers. Okay. So we've basically now got an owl's face on a disc. But we are missing something absolutely vital. No owl is any use at all without a beak. The beaks are actually, again, is uh, when you actually see an owl's beak, you see it's actually quite a lethal piece of kit. But most of what you see is covered by feathers. So you only see the very top of the beak. And it's quite thin. So we shape it up. And I want it, again, I don't want it too long. I want it to come down to a point in the feathers, so I don't want it to come right to the end of the feathers. I want it to end about there, so that's perfect. I put some slip on it and stick it in place. Sorry, just remove 
one of Tiggs's hairs. Okay. Get that in place. And I'm just going to smooth down the top of the, like that and the side to make sure the beak is on properly. Okay. Let me just finish that. So you can see a bit I've missed there, just rough it up again, although I'm going to do more to it once it's in place. So we've got our basic owl's head that is going to go onto our base. So now we come back to the base. Okay, so I've got my base here. So I've decided which is going to be the bottom, which is going to be the top. And the owl, of course, is going to go in it, but at this point, as you can probably work out, it's not going to fit. And that's because I don't want it to, because I want it to be now more curved. So I'm going to go back to now shaping this so it's curved. And then getting it to fit. I've got my calculations right. Around a bit more there to make the side of the head. So I'm making it sort of 3D, 3D plaque. So the top of the head, of course, will curve away like that. Locking those feathers in. That's the side of the head. So we're going to end up with something like that, which should fit. It's going to be quite tight. I have to make some alterations. This one is going to be a little bit further out of the hole than the other one, but that's all right. At this point, because the clay is nice and soft, you can make some changes to it, make sure, alter it around to make sure your piece will fit. In, like that. It's brilliant. Okay, so now it's in there, but of course, I've got to stick it down. You've got to remember, of course, this is going to be hollow at the back. So We've got to make sure that we leave an airspace. So either we've got to make sure we don't stick it securely all around and there's an airspace on the side so it can vent out, or we're going to have to put a hole through from the back to allow the air to vent out. If you're really worried about things popping off due to air problems, do both. Try and leave some space around and go around the back and make a hole. Belt and braces job. So now I'm going to stick this down. I'm going to go all around it. Plenty of slip. I'm going to leave a little bit at the top here for the air to get out of. I'll tuck it in. And then we work it in to fit. Like that. And I just get my tool. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to smooth it in, make sure it's not going to drop out. I don't want my owl's head to drop out of the hole. Like that. And then I can just get my tools and just finish making the feathers look a little bit more feather-like. So smooth it down, make sure there's no obvious joins and things. I'm going to go for quite a sort of rough finish of my owl, but you can make yours as smooth and detailed as you want. I'll start work a little bit more on the feathers here. Where it's curved, it's splitting a little bit because it's dry and I want to make sure that it looks okay. Right, in there, that's the side of his head. Okay, let's move that bit in there and put some feathers on him. Okay, nice smooth beak, nice smooth eyes. Make sure they're not too prominent. Let's brush that in a bit. And there he is, all finished. All I need to do now is dry it, fire it, and glaze it. So I hope that's been useful for you. And uh, if you're enjoying my videos, then please feel free to make a small donation to Crantock Art on uh, the Crantock um, page on Facebook. It would be brilliant. And I'll try and do something else next week. Thank you. Bye.